chapter 10 verse 10 the bible says the thief comes only to take the sheep and to put them to death praise the lord he comes for their destruction i have come so that they may have life and have it in greater measure praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord the verse says the thief comes only to take the sheep and to put them to death he comes for their destruction i have come so that they may have life and have in greater measure praise the lord this verse speaks about uh, it speaks about the devil and this verse says that that, that the devil is a thief amen Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So suppose I have a property with me. Amen. And a thief comes and robs from my property. Does the thief have a legal right to come and rob my property? Tell me, yes or no? Does the thief have right to come and rob my property? What is there in my property? Yes or no? Come on loudly. No. Many a times we think when we commit sin, we give the devil legal right to come in our life and to do whatever he wants in our life. Right or wrong? Please, I want good morning. Right or wrong? Yes or no? And many times we see people making statements like that. And most often we preachers make statements like that. And what is the statement? Ah, you are in sickness, you are in problem because you have given the devil right to come in your life and cause that problem. Praise the Lord. And what is the way you have given the devil right to cause problem in your life? It is by your sin amen hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah but the bible clearly says that the devil has no legal rights over us amen you understand the in 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 revelation chapter 15 it says jesus has purchased us with his blood that means who has legal right over us? Who has purchased us? Praise the Lord. Jesus has purchased us. And when Jesus has purchased us, the devil cannot have legal right over us. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All that happened, the legal right was given to the devil in the Garden of Eden. When man had authority, man had everything possible with him. What God gave man, man took it and through his sin, he gave it to the devil. Praise the Lord. But then, after years, 2000 years back, Jesus Christ died on the cross. And when he died on the cross, he took back 
what was in the hands of the devil and he gave it back to us. He purchased us from the hands of the devil. Praise the Lord. And therefore he says, I give you authority. Amen. Amen. I give you rights. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So if you understand this, it is Jesus who has the right and legal right over our life. And the devil don't have any right. So when we sin, let me tell you, the devil does not get his rights back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a lie from the devil. Ah, you have sinned. I am taking you back. That means what is happening, The if you start thinking like that, it is like shopkeeper, shopkeeper, shopkeeper client business going on. One time when you when you when you're totally forgiven, Jesus takes back, then the devil takes you back when you sin. Then Jesus takes you back, then the devil takes you back. Praise the Lord. No, once Jesus died on the cross, now no matter if you sin or you don't sin, Jesus has legal right over you. And that is over, that's signed, that's sanctioned. And the devil can never ever have legal rights over you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And many a times what we do is, Ah, I have committed sin. The devil has taken rights over me. This is the statement we make. And so let's go into three days, seven days of prayer and kick the devil out. Let's take seven steps in our life. Our spiritual steps. Let's confess our old sins. Our past history. Uh, let's look at everything. And kick the devil out. Because he has taken a legal right. No. That is not how it works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So for deliverance. We work out six steps. Seven te steps. For deliverance, we work out, uh, let's first break the ancestral curses. Let's first break the ancestral uh, bondages which have given legal right over our life for the devil. And we go step by step, step by step. And then finally, we feel after seven days, the devil has left us and we feel free from him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you check Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, John says that he is a born servant of Christ. Amen. In other words, John says he is a slave of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, that when you read that, you feel, okay, slave meaning I have to do what God commands me to do every moment. I have to be like a servant for God. I have to be like a poor slave, uh, working for God, hard working for God. That's what we think with that verse. Praise the Lord. That's what we think with that word. No, we are children of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When it comes to experience God's blessings and to have relationship with God, we are called children of God. But why John says, I am a servant of God, a born servant, a slave of God. To sh a, what was a slave? In the old times, a slave was somebody who was bought for a price. And when he, when he was bought for a price, it was the master's. The ma everything that slave had was the master's. Whatever the master wanted, he could do for that slave. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the legal right, suppose I was a slave of somebody, that person would have legal right over my life. Praise the Lord. And nobody had legal. I was a property of that person. Amen. Hallelujah. That was the meaning of slave, a bond servant. Amen. 
And this, this is what John is trying to show Christians. That he was bought for a price and he belonged to Jesus. He was now a property of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you understand. When you are born again, when you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become God's property. God becomes your owner. He takes the ownership on you. Amen. And therefore, now, if the devil comes, okay, even if you sin and the devil comes in your life and does something wrong in your life, he is doing it because he's a thief. He doesn't have any legal rights over you. Amen. You understand? He doesn't have any legal rights over you. He's just doing it because you are thief. Amen. Now, when we sin, what happens is we don't give the devil legal right to work in our life. But we give the devil a chance to work in our life. There's a difference between the two words. Chance and legal right. Amen? Praise the Lord. Now if you only understand that all these things what I'm preaching to you this morning, you will experience greater freedom and greater deliverance in your life. And you will experience deliverance at that very moment when you understand this. Because the right believing of what God has done for you will lead you into deliverance. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, as Christians, we can't give right for the devil in our life. We can give chance for the devil to work in our life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, suppose I have a house... I don't give the thief my property papers to come and rob my house. What the thief sees is, he sees where the window is open, the door is open, if there is do no dog in the house, and then he takes it as a chance and he comes and robs my house. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But if he is caught, you understand, he has to be going away from my house, and he has to pay back for, for all that he did. He has to be punished. In the same way, when you realize that sickness is coming into your body, demonic oppression is coming in your life, don't say to the don't say, don't say to yourself, "Oh, I sinned, but and and I gave legal rights to the devil to work in my life." You have to say, "Oh, I made a mistake." I did give a devil a chance to work in my life. But right now, I still have the authority. I still have the legal rights. So in the name of Jesus, I command the devil, oh evil if oppression, to go away from my life. At that very moment, he can go away. He can be bound. He can be destroyed. His authority can be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The reason Christians don't experience complete deliverance in their life is because they believe the devil gets into legal rights when they sin. The day you realize the devil has now no longer authority over your life, no longer have legal rights over your life, you are free and you're free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this morning, this is a small word for all of us to take back. And each time you feel the devil has taken charge over you because of your sin, you need to cast that devil away right away. Not entertain him and say, I have given him legal right, so therefore he is in my life. And so after one week, or one month, or after fasting and prayer, he will go over, out of my life. No. He can go away right now if you pray and if you take charge of your authority. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So sickness, financial problem, problems in the family have no legal right. They are the works of the devil, but they don't have any legal right 
to be in your life. So take charge this morning. Take authority this morning and cast him away from your life and experience freedom in Christ. Praise the Lord.